Hi, my name is Jackie, and I, um, my full name is Jackie Mutua. Uh, you can call me Jackie if it's hard to say the rest of the name. And I am from Kenya. If you probably don't know where this is, it's on the east side of the African continent. <laughs> yeah, for the people who are not from Africa. And yeah, that's me on the internet. You can find me at amcatm. Yes, I don't look like Spock, and no, I don't speak Vulcan, but I actually speak one of the alien languages that you find in the Star Trek series, and that's Swahili. So if you want to hear what Swahili sounds like, you can look for me after this. And uh, a little bit about myself is that, yeah, I sometimes dress up as a ninja, and I'm a developer. <laughs> and I love Ruby, that's why I'm here. And also, it's my first time at Ruby Fuzo, my first time speaking here, and also my first time in Cape Town, uh, which is cool. <laughs> and um, I'm really nervous to give this talk after Aaron, and he's, okay, I actually came here because I was expecting him to bring his cats also, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy to be here, you know, and I was actually glad to listen to his keynote. And I work for ThoughtWorks. I work for ThoughtWorks. So why am I even here? Why did I travel all this way to come and talk to you guys? I had intentionally, my, my first intention was to speak about um, RSpec3, but I was like, okay, maybe let, let me try and speak something else, about something else that I'm, I feel compelled to. And one of the reasons why I actually care about coming to speak here is that I feel like as Rubyists, maybe this might be naive assumptions, but I think that as Rubyists, we're really passionate about Ruby. And this is brought out in the different things that we do uh, the different things that we do in the community, and also uh, the best thing that can actually express this passion about Ruby, about, about Ruby by Rubies, is this tweet by this account. I know some of you follow it. Uh, there's a lot of trolling that goes on, but it says, you know, <laughs> I want, I want someone to look at me the same way Ruby devs look at their at their own code, and I think it's true. We have this, every time we look at our, our, our code, we, have, we, we, we tend to think that our code has this, you know, some je ne sais quoi, I don't know. And, um, and also as Rubies, we want to get better. That's why we're here at this conference. And also that's why uh, there are always these discussions in the community about things like performance, how do we get uh, to make Ruby better. And also as Rubies, I think that we're decisive in wanting to make a difference. That's why we do things like code retreats. We do stuff like Rails Girls, Rails Bridge. We're trying to get more people involved. And that's why I feel, I feel really strongly about wanting to be involved in this community. So yeah, my talk today is not about my love for Ruby, but it's about technical intimidation. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start with a short story about how I got into being a developer. I'm not going to keep it, I'm not going to make it really long because uh, yeah, all of us have our own unique and interesting stories about this. But my first encounter with programming was with Pascal, and this was when I was in high school. And for me, uh, seeing this blue screen and having to hit some debug button to uh, do some stuff that I didn't know what was going on was really interesting, but it was the, for me it was the first time that I was trying to learn how to express design using programming syntax, and it was it was a hard task for me to actually follow what was going on. But I still ended up with these huge uh, piles of source code, which I would later burn because I didn't really understand what this meant. And also fast forward to <coughs> college, where at some point it was really hard. Uh, it was really hard to uh, understand different ways of programming. Like this is a, some, some form of, of C++ code. And we'd actually uh, have to like, write a code on paper and you'd have to play the role of the human compiler and try to be like, you know, like an IDE, like write the code and also like, compile the code at the same time, which was ridiculous. And also another challenge for us, uh, maybe some of you uh, may have had the privilege of having like, access to the internet early on, but for us uh, in, in sub-Sahara Africa, uh, in the late 2000s, right? Um, yeah, I'm that old or that young. <laughs> but in the late 2000s, this is when uh, like the people were getting uh, access to the internet. And the number of internet subscribers was about like 7.6% in entire sub-Sahara Africa. And to give you uh, a feel of how expensive this was for 
most people. Like the cost of a uh, internet connection, uh, broadband connection per month at 256 kbps was about $250. And it doesn't sound like it's much, but at that point it was a lot for maybe a student if you want to have like a constant connection to internet and be able to access things like forums, to know what people are talking about. Uh, it was quite difficult. So the solution for me was like to, uh, be, uh, to be involved in like the local uh, developer communities, uh, go to the tech co-working spaces. This is where you get like access to free Wi-Fi, you be able to ac get access to your local area um, Android expert or Rails expert. And the way these guys were learning development is that they, were, they would experiment on different things and then they would come and share their knowledge in the community. And this is how some of us um, got the passion for, gr for programming. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here speaking to you. And as I continued to meet more developers, and even more developers, I started to become aware of the, of you know, some of the gaps that I had in the no, in software development knowledge. Like I would speak to some guys in China, and they would tell me about this cool technology. Oh, we're using Ruby. I'm able to do this with Ruby, but I really didn't. I couldn't like comp comprehend what they were saying because um, they seem to be exposed to more stuff than I was. And I felt intimidated and I felt like a fraud. And every time I would work on a project with some of these guys, I would be like, it's only a matter of time until they figure out that I am not one of them. <laughs> and even with Rails, as I started to learn about Rails, there's some subtle things in Rails that we take for granted, like all these naming conventions. Why is it not an action mailer and it's an active mailer? I'm sure there's a good reason why that is. And it's probably a stupid question, but some of the subtle things in the, in the language that I didn't understand. But the good thing about like, increased access to the internet is that you know, it's done a good job of democratizing knowledge. All you have to do now is just get on Google and you'll find things like blogs, things like community forums, and also open, some open source projects on GitHub where you can actually make reference to and learn from other people. That's why I think it's important for us as developers, whether you're an experienced person or a person who's just starting out. Like if you find something interesting and you, you spike it out, it's good to just push it on GitHub. You never know. Some kid at some random corner of the world could be looking at your source code. And that's how they finally see that, you know, it finally makes sense for me. And um, yeah, but the reality is that uh, there's so much to learn out there for us as developers. And there's still like a little time for us to do that. And then we, this is how we uh, end up in, you know, this develop a learning treadmill where you learn something, you adapt, then you find, you find, a, you make a new discovery. Do you feel inadequate? Then you repeat the process. And unfortunately, this is our whole, this is our whole uh, career as software developers. At every given point in time, you will always find that there's something you need to learn, something that uh, after you learn, you adapt, feel comfortable, and use that skill set to, uh, to solve the, your current problems. And when you discover that maybe uh, a, a different problem presents itself and maybe your, the skills that you have cannot solve that particular problem, you'll of, often feel inadequate and you'll just be uh, forced into this loop again. Um, a good example is this uh, visualization by Cody Val that they did last year for the most, program, most uh, popular uh, coding languages in 2014. Yeah, it's a good thing Ruby is there, so we're still relevant. Um, <laughs> so, but I'm sure if we if we made if we took if we, this visualization was made uh, for the previous years, I'm sure it would be different. And I'm sure like not all of us know are are complete experts in all 17 of these. And this just goes to show you how volatile the nature of our, uh, how volatile the nature of our work is. Like th things are always changing. You're always expected to learn. And also, uh, as Rubies, do we, all, do we all know all of Ruby? If someone here knows every single thing about Ruby, I can just go and sit down because this talk is not relevant. So I don't think it's true. Not all of us know all of Ruby. But there are certain people who we feel that, uh, personally, there are people who I feel that I, when I look up to them, I'm like, these guys just know every single thing. Someone like Matt, come on, he came up with this whole idea. Someone like DHH, Yehuda, uh, Aaron, I feel like he knows everything. Like some of you here, maybe uh, in your communities, people will think that they'll, they'll feel that you know everything because of you know, the visibility that you have in your community and how involved you are in your community and your passion for what you do in your community. And even sometimes I look at different, uh, you know, 
when I'm looking at, at, at Rails code bases, sometimes I usually see code and I, I wonder what, what, what the hell is this, you know? And I even feel that maybe uh, Gorby knows more uh, Rails than I do, because he spends so much time with uh, Aaron. Um, <laughs> so what you need to do, I think, is what is important is, is, is important is I think that we need to kill our heroes, not literally, but actually, <laughs> but actually, um, this whole idea of our heroes we have that maybe they, you know, before they were born, they were streaming like commit requests and pull requests, even before they were born, because they're so awesome. It's true, these guys are awesome. It doesn't mean that we should discredit what they're doing, because the reason why we feel that uh, some of these guys are successful is because of the passion that they have for the craft. The, the, you know, the commitment that they have to try and make things better, and maybe it's something that we should like borrow from them. So, um, Chris Morris, who, who, Chris Morris works for Living Social, I'm sure Aaron knows him. Um, he says, he made a really great talk about technical intimidation at Big Ruby last year, and he says that, you know, if you find yourself being overwhelmed by all these things that you need to learn, you're not the only one. So if guys like Chris Morris can admit this, even, you know, we should admit, we should admit this ourselves. And um, this is another interesting thing. Uh, Zachary Scott was here for Ruby Fusa, I believe, last year, and he was trying to talk about contributing to Ruby. And that's the dangerous thing about coming to stand here and give talks because people will quote you the next year. So he said, um, <laughs> reading the Ruby core mailing list is actually a good way to figure out what's, what people are talking about, what people are doing. But you know, there's certain things that you might find there and you might feel, okay, I, I don't understand what is going on. Maybe it's about an advanced issue and you're reading uh, a thread about it. And you might feel like maybe, uh, okay, maybe I'm not supposed to be here because I don't really understand what these people are talking about. But that's not the case. Even Zach says that, you know, there are certain threads that he doesn't follow. Not because he doesn't know what he's doing, but it's because like, you can't always like keep, in, keep tabs about everything in Ruby, right? Uh, so there are all these things that we're expected to know as developers, and it gets really overwhelming. And one thing that we need to understand is programming is hard, and it's only hard for two reasons. One, it's because knowing everything is impossible, and learning everything is also impossible. Going back to the learning treadmill, we expect, we're always going to have to learn different things as developers, but there's this reality where even as much as you learn, you will not know everything, so you will always feel uh, inadequate. It doesn't mean we're doomed, but it means that, um, like, coming to peace with that term is coming to peace with uh, that feeling of inadequacy or being humble enough to admit that uh, we have certain limitations is actually what's going to make you uh, push forward with this. So, and also, uh, I think the whole concept of uh, problem solving is also hard hard because it's easier to express a design in syntax after its full understanding, but the inverse is actually hard. So if you don't understand uh, an actual, an actual pro uh, problem or what the design of the sh solution should be, even if you are a really good closure programmer, even if you're a good Ruby programmer, it's going to be hard for you to actually uh, create an efficient solution for that if you don't understand the design. So it's not about the syntax, because languages are all about uh, just syntax. but if you understand the design, then that's, that's actually what you should go for. And I think uh, Jigster talks about this in this very humble programmer text where he talks about us, having, us doing a better job at programming by, by acknowledging, that, uh, acknowledging and appreciating the difficulty of a task and then also being respectful of the limitations of the human mind when we're solving problems. Then there are different things that people have talked about when it comes to learning as programmers. And I know there's a talk about being polyglots. I'm all for this, I'm all for all of us being polyglots, which is amazing. But I also think that we should also keep uh, something else in, in mind. We, also, we should also try and be like philomaths, right? In philosophy, a philomath is actually a person who loves, who likes to learn. I like the example that uh, Aaron was talking about uh, why he likes, uh, you know, why he likes programming. And it's that opportunity for you to work on something and, you know, work on something and be able, like, to solve it and also share with other people. And that comes from, you know, that comes from passion. It's not, it doesn't come from an idea of you have to, like, you have to, like, learn different, learn different things, it, learn different things, but it comes from um, enjoying that process of actually 
uh, figuring, out, figuring out stuff and sharing with other people. So as a fellow math, you need to like understand that uh, the need to learn is inevitable because you're going to be stuck in this constant treadmill as a developer. But you also need to focus on the process, not just the object of it. Focus on, okay, how do I better improve myself? What, what things can I do um, as a developer to try and you know, be better? It could be, it could be be involved in, um, in, in, in your community more by, by maybe mentoring or even like uh, trying to see ways for you to like uh, contribute to you know something like Ruby, whether it's documentation or whether it's through the code. And then um, I think like, it's important to talk about this whole aspect of intimidation because it's what actually creates the barriers to involvement. We at the, the Ruby community is actually a uh, it's actually seen as, some, as uh, an active community and, pe and a group of passionate people because like, we're always encouraging people to, you know, to contribute. We're always encourage, encouraging people to um, uh, teach other people to code through things like Rails Girls and Rails Bridge. And some of the barriers that I think are to involvement is, you know, uh, some of the barriers that we have to, to involvement are things like, you know, you fear, you fear that if you, co if you contribute to a code base, you don't know what you know, the guys are going to say there. Maybe they're going to say, oh, your, your code is crap. And also, like, people won't share it for us. They won't even challenge views. So if a person who is viewed as respectable in the community says something, like, people won't be able to feel like, oh, I can, maybe I can challenge this guy, because uh, maybe someone will be like, oh, I don't know, um, I don't think I'm good enough as this person to challenge their views. And also, things like initiatives to teach code, these are things that we want to prom promote in the community, but if we, if people, constantly feel that they're intimidated to do these things and they're not going to do this. And there are many other reasons that, there are, other, there are many other things that uh, are, are affected by the barriers to involvement. And as I said, some of the things that make people to feel that they're intimidated and some of the things that make people not to be involved in the community are usually just things like fear, the infinite weight, that you have to wait to be as good as someone uh, uh, who you view as like your hero in the com community, or if simply you don't know how to get started. So, what the last thing that I want to say is like for the experienced developers over here, I'm sure that people who have been working on Ruby for a long time, and I think you need to cut yourself some slack. If you figure out that maybe there's something that you don't know, like you've been on this treadmill for a really long time, so you will constantly feel this. So, you need to cut yourself some slack and just uh, see what you've learned. Uh, what you've learned in the past and actually have an, uh, seek out what process you use to actually learn this and you know, keep going instead of like bashing yourself and saying that, oh, I'm not really as good as X and Y. And also mentor other people. And there's also the need to share as much as you can. So if you work on something and you think it's pretty cool, put it up on GitHub or write a blog post. That's how people will like um, learn from you. And also, we always, we always say in the Ruby community that you no know, math is nice, so we are nice. So if you find people uh, submitting pull requests or doing, uh, like some, <laughs> someone had an interest, someone had an interest in, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is really entertaining. If someone, someone has an interest in trying to make improvement to maybe a, a, pro a project that you open sourced, I think like, let's be nice to these people. Let's not make them feel like, oh, your, your code is crap. So if there's, Instead of going maybe like on Twitter or maybe on like trying to make the people feel uh, bad, you should try and you know, give them a good feedback. And I think this is something that I've seen in the Ruby community. I know people like Zach, Zach, Zachary Scott do this. I once submitted a very silly pull request for Rails. I was serious actually. It was a it, it was a it was a good change, but I submitted that and I was given good feedback. And I think this is something that we should encourage uh, in the Ruby community. For the new developers, I think uh, what's important is you know find a community, find people who are passionate about doing what you are, what what you are passionate about, and this is how you how you will like, continue to get that confidence and stop feeling like you're a fraud all the time. And also take risks when you feel that you are you are uncertain or you're unsure about something. That's the best opportunity for you to actually uh, explore uh, and experiment and see how how is this going to turn out if I try X and Y. And also, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from failure. Then make sure you seek out mentors. Make sure you find people who are going to like to help you, uh, you know, to to learn the ropes of development. You will not know everything. You will always feel 
that maybe you're not making any progress, but if you're working with people who have actually been there and done that, that's how you're able to see that you've uh, progressed in different things. And also the last thing, I stole this quote from Cosmos, best show ever made. Um, so, uh, so Neil says that, uh, he says this about science, but I'm going to say this about uh, you know, development, that it's a cooperative enterprise, and it's about like, passing the torch from a student to a teacher to a student, it's a community of minds. And I feel that this is true for us as Rubyists. I think a lot of the things that uh, we do to make uh, the community active, to try and make other people part of us, are self-evident, I don't have to mention them. But I think we should keep this in mind always, the way we engage with each other in the community, the way we uh, try and make people feel comfortable, try and make people feel that, oh, you can be part of this um, community. Yeah, so that's it. Reach out, don't wait. Any questions? <laughs>